Welcome to Overwatch. This time we're going to go over the upcoming and, well, just starting finals of the long-running Overwatch event E-League's Overwatch Open. The largest prize pool currently in Overwatch and the second major Overwatch LAN event, we're going to go over what's on the line, who's involved and why perhaps you should probably be excited for it. First, a little backstory. Why not? Let's get the history on this thing. The Overwatch Open started two months ago with four large qualifier events. Like the name suggests, the tournament was an open event that allowed anyone to take part as long as you had a team of six people. Teams then competed through open brackets to play for league points. Teams had to play through four of these qualifiers unless they took first place in one of those qualifiers, in which case they automatically went through on to the group stage for the final qualifying phase. The competition was really goddamn tough, as you can imagine, a $300,000 prize pool to play for, every single major team was heavily involved and wanted a piece of that pie. The qualifiers were regional and were looking for 16 teams from each region, North America and Europe, no Asia in this one unfortunately, for a brutal group stage to decide who gets to go to the final playoffs. In Europe, Misfits started out strong, instantly going through taking the first first place slot before being joined by Rogue, Reunited and Luminosity Gaming, the former two strong roster which kind of replaced Dignitas for that top 4 spot in Europe. Europe saw some really fierce competition as well throughout the weeks with Anox, Ninjas in Pajamas and now what is FaZe Clan performing solidly throughout the weeks, definitely teams to look forward to seeing. Meanwhile, in North America, we saw a turbulent battle for those top spots, with teams being shuffled around all over the place. While Envious secured a fast first place and Cloud9 a natural second place, this tournament played out during the fall of the then Luminosity Gaming roster that moved later to NRG. That's the Seagull, Milo, Gods team, for example, all of those guys on that team. As well as the troubles Team Liquid were having filling out their roster as well. Fnatic's arrival and solid performances picked them up a solid third place and the then at the time Team Solo mid roster, now Complexity, took fourth in a very close series of games against Team Liquid. The resulting group stages took the 16 teams from each region, with the top four being seeded out into separate groups. The resulting groups were, well, a little bit top-sided, with only five or six teams in each region being serious contenders, upset potential was a little bit limited. In Europe, there were no major surprises, aside from Dignitas looking a little bit more mortal than you perhaps hope over the weeks, and Anox performing exceptionally well. As well as FaZe Clan beating Rogue in one of the series, the top 8 qualifying teams were, well, rather still expected. North America also saw some fairly one-sided groups, however, the disbanding of Northern Gaming Red gave Splice an opening which they gladly took, and Complexity Gaming's shockingly poor performance in Group D against Method and Rise Nation meant that they didn't even secure a spot to Atlanta. The result is North America is far less star-studded, and not too surprising though considering that Europe has generally had a deeper and more competitive top 8 teams than North America, with North America generally having a more rounded first and second place. And now the stage is set for the tournament proper, two groups per region made up of 8 teams. Unfortunately, regions will be separated. E-League, I think, wants a North America vs Europe final just to guarantee that a North American team will be represented on American TV even if that American team is likely to be envious, which is, again, technically a European team. Let's start with the North American groups. Group A is, well, going to be a bit of a slaughterhouse, especially for first place. If NBS drop a single game in this, I will be shocked. Even though we haven't seen much of them for a while, as long as they've remained consistent and are playing to the level that we know they can play out, they should have no issue taking first place. For second, I'd put Team Liquid. While NRG have been boot camping and training, I think Team Liquid has the more talented lineup pound for pound, and I'm sure Team Liquid have not been slacking. Although NRG have been trying to run tank heavy lineups for a while, they've always felt a little bit off in terms of playing towards the meta, often harmfully so. With the Animata in vogue, I'd be surprised to see teams not running that comp by default, but if any team does try to be different, it will probably be NRG and probably with poor results. I simply have doubts. It's been a quiet month for a lot of teams as teams have been quietly preparing for this with no other major tournaments aside from Lenovo which was a European event so American teams have kind of been in the background for a while. But I'd still be willing to say that Liquid look a better team than NRG for second place. In Group B there are two clear favourites, Cloud9 and Fnatic. There's a number of questions however with Cloud9's impressive record going downhill since the Widowmaker meta ended a while ago and even during the sort of more Genji centric meta they were looking a little bit shakier. And one can't help but feel that a lot of their talent isn't going to necessarily transfer well into the triple tank meta. I'm going to say I'm going to say that Fnatic are probably going to come out in first place in this group, and I think if you're looking for upsets, Method vs Cloud9 should be a really solid match to see. Still, I imagine Fnatic pick up first and Cloud9 second place in group B. 
Over in Europe, things get very interesting. The top tier of Europe has been increasingly cloudy and Group A is set to be incredibly intense. As a personal note, Dignitas really need to start performing. I'd really love to see them manage to start pulling things back. For a long while, they've been struggling to find results with roster swaps and all kinds of issues that I might go into on a video completely separate, and I'm hoping to find that the practice that they've apparently been putting in for Atlanta will be paying off. Still, the two favourites have to be Ninjas in Pyjamas. Who will come out on top is very difficult to say, honestly. Originally, I was favouring Reunited, but a recent crushing performance by Ninjas in Pyjamas has changed my mind slightly on that. I think Reunited's LAN experience will be invaluable for this event, however, so I'm expecting them to take first place in the group with Ninjas in Pyjamas second. FaZe could absolutely cause some upsets, but as a team with some of the most vocal distaste for the animator, I think you still have to give favourite to Reunited and Nip. Until Dignitas start performing, well, you can only really give them 4th place here. Group B could be all over the place, it's typified by inconsistent teams. Anox is a very streaky team, they put in fantastic performances and then they'll suddenly just slump. Out of all the teams available, Rogue definitely has the best shot for first place. They've just been high performing for longer, especially with their win at the last LAN event, as well as Misfits dropping games recently to Ninjas in Pajamas and Reunited. This makes me think that Rogue are perhaps the strongest team at the moment in this group. Luminosity are perfectly capable, however, of pulling off upsets, and I honestly think Group B is probably going to be the most exciting group to watch on the European side. Any of these teams is perfectly capable of taking it, so all we can do is fall back on consistency and pass results. In which case, well, Rogue certainly get first, probably Misfits in second, largely due to their recent wins versus Luminosity and their general performance overall, but honestly it is a tough call. Of course this is only speculative and teams are only now really buying heavily into the Anna meta, or the NIP comp as it's sometimes called. So expect to see it a lot or variations on it, how teams adapt and play to this new comp is going to largely determine their performance at this tournament, and teams that rely heavily on explosive carry players like FaZe or Anox could actually really struggle here. It's going to be very very tricky. But that's the key really with Overwatch. Similar to a MOBA, the meta shifts and heroes dip in and out of the meta and suddenly teams have to react and adapt. A one-trick pony team like Ninjas in Pajamas could be gone by next patch depending on how Anna ends up. It's also worth mentioning here that, well, it's a LAN and things get different at LAN events. People play differently, react differently. Some of these teams have incredibly experienced players dating back to early Quake 3 Arena days, while some have relatively fresh faces. The last LAN event saw Rogue perform extremely well, another reason why they're my favourite for the group. My favourite for the tournament? Kind of tough, I think on the North American side Envious are clear favourites to make it to the final, but we haven't seen them in tournament play for a little while. On the European side I'm going to say Rogue, with Reunited being the standard roadblock. I think Rogue have the stronger playstyle in the current meta, but I'm fascinated to see how they're going to stack up. At the end of the day I think a European team will take it all just because Europe seems the more competitive and better region at Overwatch. Sorry North America, that's just how it's landed at the moment. And I think they'll be either Rogue or Reunited. Probably Rogue. A safe bet, but hey, unless I see a crazy pattern, it's where I'm going to stay on my claim. Ninjas in pyjamas could certainly cause an upset, but I think experience of Rogue and Reunited especially will help keep them in check. Either way, there is a huge amount of good Overwatch coming up, and I for one and cannot wait, so I hope you're as excited as I am. If you disagree with my predictions, well, let me know why. If you're curious about the teams, go check Ghosty Gamers or Liquipedia. Both have big content libraries and are great for just looking through the histories of the teams. And let me know who you think is going to take it all. Otherwise, well, thanks for watching to the end. I've been Josh as one voice amongst many, and I can't wait for this tournament to start. Overwatch's pro scene has been quiet for a little while, so I'm kind of glad it's coming back in a big way. Toodles.